sorted. The while loop would have been executed j minus 1 times or not at all. So clearly the running time therefore depends on the type of input, whether the input is uh, sorted, whether it's reverse sorted or in general you know some of the elements are going, it's, it's going to be partially sorted maybe. So um, what this means is that for the same input size, that is for the same length of the input sequence n, you can have a range of running times depending on what the nature or type of that input is. This means that this means that we can have different notions of running time for the same input size. Okay, depending on whether the, the array is sorted or reverse sorted or not. Now depending on what type of input it is, in general we have three different notions of running time for the same input size. So um, let me call the running time as t of n just to indicate that it depends on the input size. But as we've seen, it, the running time is also going to depend on what type of input it is. So we can have three different notions of running time. We can have a best case running time value for t of n. We can have a worst case value for t of n. And we can have an average case value for t of n. So the worst case t of n is simply going to be the maximum time on any input of size n. Right? And for the insertion sort algorithm, we've seen that if we want to maximize this running time, t of j should be as large as possible t sub j sorry. This is of course constant so this is not going to depend on the type of input but this is going to depend on the type of input and if the input is reverse sorted we know that t of j is going to be equal to j minus 1. If the input is uh, already sorted then t of j is going to be 0. So if we want the worst case value for t of n, we have to consider an input instance which will maximize this time. Okay, You want the algorithm to perform as bad as possible in the worst case. What is the longest possible time an algorithm, this algorithm could run for? Well, the longest possible time it could run for is when t of j is always equal to j minus 1. So, and that is when the input is reverse sorted. The best case time is the minimum time on any input of size n. So the best case value for t of n for insertion sort is going to be the value that results when we try to minimize this. And when will this expression be minimum? When t of j is equal to 0. And when will t of j be equal to 0 always? t of j is going to be equal to 0, is, is always going to be 0 if the input sequence is already sorted, as we've seen sometime a few minutes ago. And so uh, that's, that's going to, if you put t of j equal to 0, you can see that the running time is going to be some constant multiplied by n minus 1. So the best case time for t of n is going to be some constant multiplied by n minus 1. Okay, so the best case time is going to be some constant k prime multiplied by n minus 1. The worst case time will result when t of j is j minus 1 and what's the summation of this series 
j equal to 2 to n j minus 1 well it's simply uh, if you put j equal to 2 you get 1 if you put j equal to 3 you get 2 the second term of the series is going to be um, 2 because when you put j equal to 3 you get 3 minus 1 2 then j becomes 4 4 minus 1 will be 3 when j becomes 5, 5 minus 1 will be 4, and so on. And finally, when j becomes n, this is going to be n minus 1. So this series is simply the first sum of the first n minus 1 numbers, which uh, you probably know is n, n minus 1 divided by 2. And if you've forgotten the formula for that, there's a simple way to calculate this. You just write series in this way and then you write it in the reverse way so you write the first term the last term first second last term uh, as the second term and so on and finally the last term is going to be one so by writing this in two different ways uh, you can do something interesting you can add both these equations so the left hand side is going to become 2 times s and the right hand side is going to be n so if you add 1 to n minus 1 you're going to get n if you add 2 to n minus 2 you're going to get n if you add 3 to n minus 3 you're going to get n and so on and the last term was or the if you add the last term of this series to the last term of the same series written in this was n minus 1 plus 1 is also going to be equal to n so you're going to be adding n to itself n minus 1 times because there are n minus 1 terms in this series. So this is going to be n multiplied by n minus 1. And so s is going to be simply n multiplied by n minus 1 divided by 2. So going back to uh, this expression for the running time, the worst case running time therefore is going to be k1 multiplied by n n minus 1 by 2 plus some constant multiplied by n minus 1. So this is going to be some constant um, k prime multiplied by n minus 1 plus this cons some other constant k1 multiplied by um, n n minus 1 by 2 now what how do we calculate the average case time uh, the average case time is the expected time on average over all inputs of size n So, you look at all possible inputs of size n, calculate what the value of the running time should be for each of them, and you also rely on a probability distribution of how likely each of those inputs is. So, if each of those inputs is equally likely, you will simply add together their running times and then divide by the total number of possible inputs of size n. So clearly, in order to calculate the expected time, you really need to know what are the different possible inputs of size n and how likely you are to encounter those inputs. So you need some kind, some assumption about a probability distribution. So average case time, in general, is going to rely on uh, probability theory so this is in general going to be more difficult to calculate than the best case time or the worst case time and I'll talk more about that in the uh, in the next video but on an average let's say that all possible inputs all the different inputs of size n are equally likely 
what would be the time, the average case complexity of insertion sort? Well, on an average, what will be the value of t sub j? Well, let's look at let's look at this step where we are executing the while loop t sub j times. If you if you take if you look at the value of x, and if you assume that all possible inputs of size n are equally likely. Can we say something about how many elements in this sorted portion are going to be greater than x or less than x? Well, we can say that each of these elements is equally likely to be less than x or greater than x. And there is no reason why if we pick a random element here, it should be less than x or uh, greater than x. There is no reason to expect any kind of bias here on an average. Right? For a particular, if you are given that the input is sorted, then of course we can say something. If you are given that it's reverse sorted, then of course we can again say something. But if you are given that all the different possible inputs are equally likely, then if we pick the first element here, it's as likely to be less than x as to be greater than x. Likewise, the second element here is as likely to be less than x as it's likely to be greater than x. So on an average, half of these elements are going to be less than x and half of these elements are going to be greater than x. This means that this boundary on an average is going to have half of the elements to the left and half of the elements to the right. So on an average, we will be executing the while loop j minus 1 divided by 2 times because there are j minus 1 elements in total and if half of these elements are going to be greater than x or, or, or are expected to be greater than x then we expect the value of t sub j to be half of the length of this entire range which is j minus 1 and so we expect the value of t sub j on an average to be j minus 1 divided by 2. Now note that this is exact j minus 1 divided by 2 um, is exactly half of what t sub j was here because in the worst case it was j minus 1 because we had to go all the way to the left but on an average we'll be going half the way. So on an average we'll be going j minus 1 by 2 uh, places to the left and that's the number of times the while loop will be executed. And so the average case running time then is going to be uh, this expression plus k1 times the sum of this series where the value of t sub j now is j minus 1 divided by 2. And since we've already calculated what this series was in the worst case where t sub j was equal to j minus 1, we just have to take half of that to get the value of this expression in the average case. So the worst case time was k, k prime times n minus 1 plus k1 n n minus 1 by 2. On an average, this is going to be k prime times n minus 1 plus half of this expression because we have j minus 1 divided by 2 now instead of j minus 1. So this is going to be k1 times n n minus 1 divided by 4. Now these values for the best case, average case and worst case running times may appear to be very complicated. Clearly, how do you figure out, uh, clearly it's impossible for us to uh, know what these values of these constants is going to be because, you know, we we are working with a generic machine and uh, on a real machine, uh, depending on what real machine you, you, you choose to run your algorithm on, depending on what programming language you use, depending on how you optimize your code, 
uh, depending on what are the jobs there are running on the machine. The values of these constants are going to be different. But uh, the, the big idea behind analyzing an algorithm is going to be that we are not going to worry about the values of these constants. We are only going to worry about the most dominant term in this overall expression. And that's something I'm going to uh, elaborate on in the next video.